Good morning and welcome to Inside Tennessee. I'm your moderator John Becker along with my colleague John North and this morning we're going to tackle the four proposed constitutional amendments that are on the ballot this year. Very important. We're going to hear from a Democrat but first, we're going to hear from a Republican on this, and we're joined by Senator Becky Duncan Massey, a veteran of the legislature there since 2011, first elected. Uh, we appreciate you joining us this morning. Susan Richardson Williams, a Republican. She runs her own PR firm. She's on our panel. Don Bosch, who runs his own law firm, a Democrat, on our panel as well. Senator, I'm going to use your words to set up our conversation. You sent this out in a tweet earlier this week, and you're voting yes on all four proposed constitutional amendments. The first right. is protect work workers' rights to decide to join a union or not by ensuring union membership cannot be a condition of employment. Amendment number two, establish a protocol for emergency transfer of power if the governor is temporarily incapacitated. Number three, prohibit slavery and involuntary servitude by removing an exception for slavery or involuntary servitude for convicted criminals. And number four, the summation here, remove language prohibiting religious ministers from holding office in the state legislature. The real controversy we've seen thus far centers on Amendment 1. John North, your question. Senator, focusing on that first one, uh, we already have a state law, as you know, the right to work law, which has been in place, so I think, seven five years uh, and um, critics would say we don't need this it's unnecessary I know other leaders uh, including Governor Lee former Governor Haslam say it is necessary I'll say as in a personal side when I moved here in 1993 I went to work in a union shop I was not forced to do anything pay dues or do anything at all so why do we really need this well it's been proven that right to work states are, are are better off as far as financially and as far as worker opportunities. But uh, we have, you're correct, we have been a, a right to work state for 75 years. There's 27 other states that are, and there's nine that have it in their constitution. And so the legislature did feel that this was a protection for all folks, whether just because you weren't forced to or not forced to, you know, there are instances that, uh, that that can happen, and we wanted to put it in the Constitution, and it did pass the bar um, to to become uh, an initiative on the ballot, which Don is Bosch, a pretty high bar to meet. We'll, we'll and we'll talk about the bar it needs to meet in order to pass and be codified in the Constitution in just a minute, but Don Bosch, your, your first question. Yeah, uh, Becky, uh, unfortunately, again, we're going to disagree a little bit, despite being good friends. Uh, it really becomes, in my opinion, as the AFL-CIO is put, the right to work for less. You know, I grew up a union kid, and unions helped my father make a, a better wage. Unions have a collective bargaining power that the state has really, we've historically tried to limit through just the, the regular legislation. Now we're really trying to make it just that much harder for employees, ordinary men and women making hourly wages typically, to, to negotiate, to have strength. I, I know you said that states are better off, but don't you mean that the employers are better off and not the employees? Um, well, Don, like I say, I think we probably agree on a whole lot more than, than we don't agree on, but uh, in this case, uh, you know, there's been a studies that have showed that non-union wages have grown by 5.8% in the last couple of years, while union wages only grew by 38 And the thing is, by being a right-to-work state, we are recruiting really great businesses to come to Tennessee that are paying high wages. And that, you know, that helps give folks the opportunity for better employment so i i i believe that it makes the whole state better it makes it better for for our workers and for our tennesseans and it really makes it neutral whether you want to join a union or not so it's not like it says you can't make them join a union but but you can't make them not join a union too so it really just leaves it up to the individual rights which i think a lot of us really appreciate but it also it also creates a situation where a company could say we're not going to negotiate with the union on behalf of the workers and that's my concern is they're ultimately the, the worker could be left off the table 
uh, and, and I know you gave that statistic of 5% and 3%, but when you look behind those figures, and I've actually done that today, that those states have other reasons that numbers are economically depressed. Uh, we're, we're fortunate we do have a good economy right now with work, but I don't know that I don't know that making this a constitutional amendment is necessary already with the legislation. It's tough enough for the worker to get a better wage in this state. And frankly, I know we're offering good wages, but not as good as they should be and not as good as a lot of other places. Susan, your question to the senator. Can I, I want to add one sure. thing that though, when you're looking at other states, so oftentimes those are northern states, their mm -hmm. uh, cost of living is a lot higher. And so it does require higher wages in those states. So sometimes when you look at these statistics, we're not always comparing apples to apples. You know what they say about statistics. <laughs> Susan? Um, do I have time yes. to ask a question? Um, yeah, Senator, I, I would add that Starbucks has unionized here in Knoxville, Tennessee, and they took the initiative to do it, and they voted, and the ones that wanted to join joined, and the ones that didn't didn't have to. And I think that's absolutely fair. Senator, there seems to be a push nationally, maybe it's the Biden administration being in charge, I don't know, but a push to unionize more or to for the union labor unions to kind of come back. They've been they've been weaker in the past 20, 30 years, maybe. But I think it's push now. Did that did that cause this amendment to come to the forefront? Well, I think that definitely played into it. So this this amendment had to start two legislative sessions ago. It has to pass by a simple majority in one two-year cycle, and then it has to pass by two-thirds majority in the next two-year cycle. So it's, it's something that just didn't come on the table this year. I mean, it is a process to even get to the ballot um, before we can vote on it and reach that bar. We're going to talk about the hurdles that it has to overcome and, and actually make the Constitution. We're going to take a quick break on Inside Tennessee, back with more of our conversation.